What's good, y'all? Elvis here, back again with another episode of Better Barbering. For the people that don't know, Better Barbering is a series that I started where I shared 10 tricks that made me a better barber that other people used to make them better barbers and not even better people. So being a barber is great, but it is entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship has its cycles and it never starts off as good as it really can be. Most people become an entrepreneur to be, get out of wage slavery. You feel me? They want more freedom as far as making money. They want to have more options as far as how to live their life and whatnot. But that comes with a higher level of responsibility. So it's not a trade-off most people want to make. But sometimes people come into barbering with a more of a employee mindset, which isn't necessarily wrong. But when you become a barber, you don't have one boss like you do when you're an employee. You have a bunch of little bosses. The power that your one boss usually has gets spread amongst the people that are, let's say, your customers and your clients. So you're still working for money. It's just a different kind of employment. It's self-employment. Instead of having a person over you cracking the whip on you, it's really you cracking the whip on yourself to get towards your goals. Many barbers, as well as myself, have gone through seasons where they were functionally a slave to their chair. Today's video is five signs that you are a slave to your chair. These are not in any specific order. And if you have just one of these, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily a slave, but we're all at different levels of slavery realistically if we're not basically dictator of our own sovereign nation, realistically, you know what I'm saying? But if you got all these, you might need to make some changes or you probably want to make some changes because nobody likes living this kind of life. Number one sign that you are a slave to your chair. You are afraid to enforce boundaries. You're afraid to enforce boundaries, let's say with your clients, with your coworkers. It's really coming from a scarcity mentality of, oh, well, I have to fit into this mold and I have to do exactly what people expect of me or I won't be able to have the agency that I want to. When you don't feel like you have agency, you're afraid to disagree with anything. Even if disagreeing means establishing a, a boundary of respect for you and how you want to run your business or how you just want to be treated for real, for real. It could be a season you can't necessarily turn the money away, or it could be a season where you, you're you trying to grow as much clientele as possible, so you feel like, so cutting every potential client is gonna grow your clientele the biggest it possibly can, and if you don't do that, you feel like you're not gonna grow your clientele. But for the record, that's not true. That's just the scarcity mentality talking to you. If you have as little as three clients that are actually fitting into your business well and are growing with you, you can multiply that and get 30, you can get 300, but it's all about the quality of clientele that you're focusing on replicating. Just cutting anybody will attract people like them for better or for worse. So it's important to have an idea of what your target demographic is and what your purposes are for building clientele and growing your business. Number two sign that you're a slave to your chair. You feel overworked and underpaid. That relates to the first one. If you feel like you're spending too much energy for too little money, there's a lot of things you can do to remedy that. You could either decrease energy investment, which might mean, let's say, not doing a bunch of extra add-on services. It could mean, for most people, it really means being more energy efficient with the work that you are doing. When I first started cutting hair, it, a fade took me like two hours to do. But then I had to get more and more energy efficient with that to increase my income. Because before I was making what? A fade, I was charging maybe $10 for but two hours of work for $10, that's less than minimum wage. I had to become more time efficient, more energy efficient. And now the phase that used to take me two hours, I can do a way better fade in like less than 10 minutes. But I booked my appointments in like 45 minutes slots to an hour. So that's like, let's say 10 minutes I spent on a fade and I could spend the rest of time detailing, interacting with a client, providing the, the value that's outside of just the haircut service. Now the thing that's, that takes the most energy for me to do is to interact with people because haircuts just happen. People sit down, I'm thinking about groceries and the haircut is done. Now it low-key takes more energy for me to talk and interact with somebody than it does to do a haircut. Another thing that's important about, let's say being, more, being overworked or underpaid is what are you getting paid with? Because money is the lowest level of incentive for payment. If you feel purposely drawn in what you're doing, people tend to not care about the money as much. If you're cutting your son and you having and you feeling real meaning in this interaction you having, you're not gonna charge your you're not gonna charge your toddler at the end of the haircut. You are gonna feel like you got paid. You know what I'm saying? Assuming that you like cutting hair and interacting with your kid. You feel me? There's a lot of barbers that charge next to nothing for haircuts because they make money doing something else, but they don't feel overworked and underpaid for doing the haircuts because they're interacting with people and there's value other than monetary being exchanged more sentimental value. 
the beautiful thing about barbering, as far as income, it can be your main chick, it can be your side chick, you know what I'm saying? It can fit whatever purposes you want. You can make a way more money over here, so like barbering is just play money, that's just gas money, that's gas and groceries. But it all comes from being intentional about the payment that you want through this. Okay, number three sign that you are a slave to your chair. You don't like your clientele. That kind of ties back to number one, being afraid to set boundaries. If they say you teach people how to treat you, that's true to a degree. But I think it's more accurate to say you teach people how to treat you off of the cues that you give about how you treat yourself. If you're the kind of person that is doing your best to be professional, on time, carry yourself with a certain energy, people are gonna take those cues and reflect that back to you. You're gonna deal with a lot less disrespect from other people when you respect yourself to a higher level. And also it's important to understand what kind of clientele you want to have within your business. And it's one of those things that's trial and error. Like when I was in college, I was like, okay, well, I wanna cut college students. Those are people I relate to. And then over time, I realized, well, just because we college students, we do the same thing. We don't do this shit the same. A lot of these people come with some weird ass energy. A lot of these people come with disrespect for themselves. And that extends to me. And I was like, OK, I don't want to have that. I cut them out my business, established stricter booking policies, late fees, other things like that. Raise my price, increase the value of my service because some people want McDonald's haircuts. Some people want Chick-fil-A haircuts. Some people want Ruth Chris haircuts. Everybody has a different perception of value and the people that have the perception of value that matches you will find you. So the way to get clientele with a higher perception of value is to increase your perception of value. Invest more time, energy, and money into the aspects of your business that you like. Becoming what you consider your ideal barber will attract what would be your ideal clients. So it starts with you. Number four sign you are a slave to your chair. You are living check to check. You know, as barbers, we are independent contractors. So it's not like we get a certain check at the end of the week. I mean, if you have commission or you, if you depend on your, your, your shop's payment structure or whatever, it might be slightly different. But most barbers, they getting paid right when they do the work. If you're functionally living check to check and at the end of the week, you pay whatever you need to pay, you, let's say you're damn near breaking even on booth rent and then you got other bills and other responsibilities that take all your money and you go into the next week feeling broke and you're like, <sighs> you're feeling antsy and you're really, really pressed about the clients that are coming in this week to pay the next bill. There's a level of slavery to that. And I'm a pot calling the kettle black because I've been through a bunch of seasons where I, let's say, made upgrades in my business, but then, but then also raised my price. And every time you raise your price, you're starting a new business functionally. You can't assume your clients are gonna stay within this new business. You gotta constantly be building, especially if you're growing so like when you raise your price that's a whole new business you can expect at least half your clients to leave just off of it's a different price people want to retain their resources especially when they can find a comparable comparable quality service somewhere else so you know as you grow your business or as you're growing your business and you're progressing your overhead is probably going to get higher especially if you're investing in yourself so there might be times where you're back to grinding oh i need these haircuts in ideally you want to be scaling in a way that's sustainable so you have a safety net or a little cushion so you don't feel as pressed about the people that are coming in this next week. If you have that level of security, it's a lot harder for people to press your boundaries because you're in an abundant mentality and you understand, oh, well, I don't mind turning away the little change this dude is trying to trying to give me right here. And as a barber, you're going to interact with a lot of people who are going to wave money in front of you, try to make you move in an inconvenient way for them. People prioritize convenience, but not convenience for you, convenience for them. So there's going to be a lot of people trying you. And as soon as you allow a client to disrespect your boundary, that's going to be a lot harder to correct later because you've already sent the message to this client that, oh, well, for the right price, I can make him do a trick. I can make him move how I want to. Financial literacy is super crucial for all entrepreneurs, but especially for barbers and people that are touching money every day. Because if you have money in your pocket every day, that's easier to spend money every day. All right, last one. Number five sign that you are a slave to your chair. You think you need rich clients to become rich. Having a high income as a barber is not the end all be all. It's more about what you keep versus how much you make. If you're busting heads out making 100K a year, but if you're spending 98K and you only have 2K at the end of the year, well, you're not doing that well. Especially compared to somebody who, let's say, has a lower overhead. Somebody could be making 50K a year, but then their, their expenses are 30K, and now they have 20K. Then they can use that to 
have more freedom to expand their business, increase their income, and do a bunch of other things. They have a lot more agency than the person making 100K a year, but it's functionally check to check. But I hear a lot of barbers think that they think they have to cut people like lawyers, doctors, celebrities, people with a higher income to make more money when that logic doesn't actually check out. Because clients with more money don't necessarily spend more money on haircuts. You feel me? Like, I know people that are millionaires that don't value a haircut more than $30. They would never pay more than $30 for a haircut unless they just were feeling generous one day and decided to tip. But they're stingy people when it comes to haircuts because that's not what they value. But also, I got high school kids that want to pay my full price because they value the interaction with me. They value with the other, they value the, the things around the haircut. A haircut service for me might me might just be cutting somebody hair shorter to a person that's a millionaire but somebody who might make a little bit more than average values that haircut values that interaction with me is willing to spend more money and then as well as tip on top of my inflated price you have to deal with people that have a similar perception of value as you do or perceive a higher level of value of what you provide and usually that means when you get to a point where you're like let's say 30 40 dollars most people can get a quality cut at 30 40 dollars if they're spending more than 30 40 dollars on a haircut with a barber then more than likely this barber is somebody who's too booked at 30 or 40 dollars so they had to raise their price to you know open up their time and energy they're spending money as a result of the value being traded within that relationship. Once you get past $30, $40 for a haircut, you're not really paying for the haircut anymore. You're paying for a time and energy investment of a person. So the way to make more money off of your haircut service is first off to increase the value that you want to provide and then find a market that values that at your level or higher. And a lot of times that's not somebody with a crazy amount of disposable income because people spend the money on the things that they value. I can guarantee you every time you were really in need of something, regardless if it was way more money than you could afford right now, you went and found the money. That's how value works. When people have enough, when people perceive enough value, they'll make it work. There might be somebody out here that makes $20 an hour and they think paying $80 is worth it for a haircut. And think about that. That's four hours of their time in exchange for a haircut. That says a lot more about what this person values than anything. They could be super cheap, let's say eating McDonald's, eating a bunch of other convenient things, but it's like when it comes to their hair or even just their interactions with people, they want something premium. I'm personally a minimalist. Like I haven't bought shoes in maybe a year and some change. And like, I think last year I bought a pair of shoes. Then the year before that, I bought a pair of shoes. I don't care about spending money on shoes and clothes but I will drop a bag on something like a Dyson air purifier because that's the shit I value. Think about that, a Dyson air purifier. That's like, that was like, I think that was maybe, might be $800. When I was charging like $40, $800 divided by 40, that's 20. So functionally, I did 20 haircuts for an air purifier. That sounds ridiculous to most people, but it made sense to me because that's the shit that I love. It's the same thing when clients are coming to spend money with you. So you need to find people that are at your perception of value to make more money. But to even get to that perception of value, you're going to have to increase your own agency, make moves to become less of a slave to your chair. And sometimes that might mean making outside income. That might mean taking down your expenses over here. There's a bunch of different ways you can play it. But as long as it's anything that adds more freedom for you is good for your business. Okay, that's the list. So for the month of December, I'm offering free coaching consultations or whatever. So I recently created a Patreon where I'm going to be putting up a lot of like, let's say consult like specific consultations, clipping those up. Any real valuable conversations and gems I can share, I'm going to be putting on there. If you would like a consultation or some kind of coaching, I'm, I'm doing free consultations for the rest of December. If you want that, if you're interested, Go ahead and DM me at Better Barbering on Instagram. We can make something shake. But if you haven't already, follow your boy on Instagram as well as TikTok. Follow your boy at Cuts by Elvis and at Better Barbering. If you got any value from this video, I'd appreciate a like, a subscribe, and a share to somebody who could use it. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got for today. I appreciate y'all again. Till next time, craft of a clout. I'm out.